Hi everyone, Goldam here with another Vox Immortalis commentary guide. This video is for the heroic difficulty of Deathbringer Sarfang and Ice Crown. Uh, to begin, your raid setup will be similar to normal. However, you'll need one additional healer. So to that end, we use two healers, a Resto Druid and a Holy Paladin. And if your raid has a Holy Paladin available, they're extremely strong in this fight just due to the way uh, the mark damage and beacon work together. Uh, everything else is pretty much the same, so I'll only explain the differences in Heroic. Uh, the first thing is the fight really revolves around controlling his blood power gain, uh, whereas in normal you can kind of ignore it. And so you have to do that by reducing the damage he deals with special abilities. Uh, the main one is Boiling Blood, which is the dot, of course, that does physical damage. And since it's a physical dot, it can be removed with Hand of Protection, on other players or self immunities such as divine shield or ice block so the way we manage it uh, that we learned was the most ideal is the very first boiling blood that goes out on a non paladin or non mage target our holy paladin will immediately hand in protection that player and that basically means that the blood power sarfang would have gained is reduced to zero so it saves you around 12 or 13 blood power from being gained and then when he reaches about 70 um, blood power, our protection paladin will hand a protection the next boiling blood. And because he's higher in uh, blood power at that point, it actually saves you about 15 blood power. Uh, but in terms of time, it's all relative. Uh, but again, those two things, and then our paladins and our, sh our mage will actually self-immune themselves when they get boiling blood. So that's really five reductions and then because of the talent, our Holy Paladin can actually do it twice later on in the fight if it lasts long enough. So six Boiling Bloods that basically do nothing uh, really add up and basically save you almost a full mark. The other main difference is management of the Blood Beasts. Um, as you can see, we force them to cross over in front of the tanks. And we do this by having uh, one ranged DPS on either side at an extreme angle. So our Elemental Shaman in the top right, he will quickly aggro the Blood Beast that spawns to my left. And a Shadow Priest that you can't really see on the left does the same thing to the Blood Beast on the right. And again, that forces them in front. And then as the Protection Warrior, I use my Shockwave every time that happens. And that stuns them both for five seconds, which just gives our range time to kill them. We also have Piercing Howl from myself and Desecration from our Death Knight there and that helps to snare them. And the other thing is we only have one range DPS on the blood beast that spawns to the on the left, which is our, our elemental shaman. So he and I will rotate controlling it. Uh, he will use his knockback ability, the first, third, fifth spawn, etc. And then I will use taunt to taunt it when it gets near him on the other ones. Uh, using vigilance on our other tank will help with taunt refreshes to get it quickly. And you may have seen earlier, um, using that method, our shaman actually died because I failed to taunt soon enough. Uh, the second taunt I did, uh, did hit him in time and the, the mob actually changed targets. You might have seen the attack change, but it was just a second too late and it still hit him once. Um, they gain a, a buff called Scent of Blood that increases their damage by 300% and snares people around them by 80%. So it's really hard to kite them in heroic. So that's why you want to have a good system for managing them. Um, other than that, the fight is pretty much the same. You'll want to make sure healers are aware of mark targets and when he hits 30% for Frenzy, and then it's just general blood power level as his damage, of course, increases exponentially. And uh, that's about it. Thanks for watching.